Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog parmasomboon.com and today I am going to do a video similar to the one with the sourdough where I showed you exactly how I used my sourdough for two weeks but with cast iron. So I'm going to do a week in the life of all of my cast iron skillets. What I cook on them, how I clean them, I'm just going to take you along. using my cast iron this morning. I actually had all four going making English muffins. The key to not getting them dirty with English muffins is to allow them to preheat and then only turning the bread product whenever it is fully done and it comes away easily from the pan. If you do it before then it'll leave some of the bread right on it. Now again of course you can clean it but the goal with English muffins and pancakes is to not clean it. So what I will do with three of these right now is get a dark towel like this and just wipe it out. This has just a few little dried on pieces of the dough. Other than that, it just has a little bit of oil because I put a little coconut oil before I cooked these. And so this one's good to go. Not getting it wet means I don't have to worry about thoroughly drying it, just kind of wiping it out. This one actually had something else on it too. It hadn't been cleaned for a little while. I'm gonna do the same thing with it because it's mostly just perfectly clean. Now this, using oil and heat and then not cleaning it often, almost re-seasons it over and over again. So I have not re-seasoned any of these skillets since the first time I did it. See, this just has a little piece of dough and it already popped off with my finger because it was so non-stick. So that one's good to go. I'm gonna stack these three up and just put them back for another use. And I'm gonna use this one here in the front. I still have a few English muffins going for eggs. So I'll show you how we get eggs not to stick. And then if they do happen to stick, um, how we will clean them. Now this pan here is looking a little bit dirtier than the other ones. Sometimes that will make things stick, so we'll see how these eggs go. I am just going to wipe out these bits into the sink. Anywhere where there's something stuck on, the food will stick, but it seems that it's pretty good. I'm just gonna get this preheated. Preheating is always key with cast iron. I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. This is actually, I don't need quite this much. It's already pretty preheated because I was making those English muffins. I'm just trying to get off anything stuck on because that's what'll make my egg stick. Going to. Turn that down just a bit. Now in order to make it not stick, you don't want to flip much. So see how this right here isn't releasing from the pan yet? I'm just going to wait a minute. Now this one's releasing, so I can flip it. And as I predicted, because it was a bit dirty, it is sticking a bit. I will be showing you another time this week when the one doesn't because I'm going to probably be making lots of eggs. It's not sticking bad, and I will show you how we get, we're going to clean this. But like one of these pans over here that I just cleaned for the English muffins, they're so shiny and clean, this would not have sticked at all. Or would not have stuck, oh my gosh, sticked. One of my, one of my children. Really this all will come right up. Okay, so for this skillet, Let's see how we will do with just a scrape out. Now what I would normally do with one like this is just a quick rinse with one of these with a little water and a stainless scrubber. And then I'll throw it on the burner to finish drying. You wanna get anything that's stuck on because that's what's gonna cause it to stick next time. And then just right back on the burner. And then if your skillet is looking dull, just a little oil. So I just kind of rub it out. That way the water is absorbed quickly with the burner. Now that it's nice and hot, a good thing to do is I'll just dip a little bit of oil. I'll just put a little bit of oil on it and then just rub it around with a dark colored towel. 
And with the heat, this will make something that looks dull look perfect again. And just feel for anything where there's something stuck on so that it'll be perfectly non-stick again next time. I can feel like one little spot here that's gonna cause me an issue. And there we go, it's gone. That's why I love those stainless scrubbers. Okay, so there you go. This one's ready to go back in the pile. It is not wet, so it will not rust. Nothing is stuck on it. This skillet was used yesterday to make sourdough cinnamon rolls. Have been sitting in it a while, so it's really dirty. It got really stuck on. So I'm gonna put a dark rag down in my sink because otherwise whenever I go to clean this, it makes a bunch of marks. And then I'm just gonna run some really hot water and no soap, but this stainless steel scrubber, like a chore boy. It'll come up really easily that way. It won't hurt the season. I've been doing this forever. It's always fine. All right, that's it. Now, you could either dry it with the dark towel, but I like to apply heat and oil in situations like this. So I'm gonna go over to the stove and apply some heat. A lot of times once it gets really hot, I'll just rub the towel on it to encourage it to dry everywhere really quickly. All the rest of the water just evaporates. That's how you know it's all the way dry. If you only use a towel, you have to make sure to get in every area to make sure there's not a drop of water. Whereas if it's hot, if you kind of spread it around, anything that is left will just evaporate. And what's on bottom, because that also, especially if you're gonna stack them up, you don't want any water on the bottom. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil and just rub it around. And now it is ready to go back in my stack, back in my stove. I feel like this video is gonna get really repetitive really quickly. Probably won't do two weeks like I did with the sourdough starter. It's just one week, cause yeah, you're gonna get the, the point. This, I cooked some fried chicken in, then I strained the oil so that there weren't any big fried chicken bits in it, and I cooked some potatoes in it, and it's actually totally fine. In fact, what you don't wanna do in this situation is wash out all of this oil, because that is what is making it stay nice and seasoned. Less water, more oil is always the key with cast iron. So like before, get a dark colored towel. I'm just gonna wipe this out, spread the oil around and get out like, you know, all of the potatoey parts. If you're just gonna cook the next meal, you don't even need to do this to be honest with you. I really like to look on my stove and see clean cast iron skillets and I don't like to just see, it just, the kitchen doesn't feel clean, it doesn't feel done until I look over and there's like a nice little pile of skillets. And so that is why I wipe it out, but honestly, if you're planning to cook something else, which I forgot I'm gonna be cooking something like really soon here, but it's probably gonna be in the Dutch oven. So we'll move on to the Dutch oven. But because of that, I usually do just wipe it out really quickly and then it has this perfect shine and I don't see any little bits of bread or anything else and I can put this on the back of the stove. It looks good. The act of cooking the fried chicken and the potatoes really did just re-season it again, especially since I'm not gonna add any more water. And I took my cast iron Dutch oven out of the cabinet to make some chili, and you can see it has rusted. This is what happens with cast iron that doesn't stay out of the stove if you're not super, super diligent about getting it dry. And a lid, you can't really heat it. I guess you could. You could stick it on top to heat it. You should do that. I never think of it as something you can heat because it's a lid. You should stick it on the heat. But I did not do that clearly. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to clean this really, really well. I am going to put it on the heat and add some coconut oil. So I'm just gonna get my tour boy here. This is like my favorite cast iron tool is a stainless scrubber. I'm gonna put rag down in here so I can set this down without getting my sink dirty. I'm gonna scrub, 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 scrub. I'm gonna get all that off. I have this happen to skillets on occasion too if they get put back wet or stacked up in a little stack wet. And this is always what I do. I just rub it down with the stainless scrubber, heat and oil, you're good to go. The top looks pretty good, I might do it as well. Do this. Should I do it like that or like this? 
I'll do it like that. I guess this is gonna work. Maybe I will. The heat is just the key, so you gotta do it. There. I don't see why not. It's cast iron. You can start an open fire for that matter. Okay, so it's mostly evaporated. Thea's gonna throw a fit here. All right, we're just gonna wipe this down. I'm gonna hold it like this. Get some oil on the front, on the back, or however you wanna look at it. It's kind of the back. It's a little bit difficult because we have a handle, but I'm just gonna do it while it's still hot though because this is what'll help it to really fill the little parts of the cast iron to make it season. I'm gonna do it with the back. There's a little oil on my towel, so that'll work as well. Now, several videos ago, actually I have a blog post as well, I show you how to make a cast iron seasoning oil, so that's perfect. You can also just use coconut oil. Either one works. I'm out of the seasoning oil, so this is what we're doing. But this now will not rust. It's looking good. Last night, my younger sister was over and watched the kids while we went on a date night, and so she cleaned the skillet and had it sitting in the back. So I didn't show cleaning it. It looks like there's a little tiny bit of rust, like a little water was sitting in it. So I'm going to hit it with my stainless scrubber and some heat and oil and then put it away because I'm making dinner tonight. I'm making a risotto in one pot, which isn't cast iron. And I'm gonna cook some pork steaks in a cast iron. So we will talk about that. Now the skillets didn't actually get used all day until tonight because we made waffles for breakfast in the waffle iron. For lunch we just ate leftover chili that I warmed up in stainless steel. So this is the extent of my cast iron usage for day two of this whole week of the life of my cast iron. Now for this one, since it has such high sides, you gotta make sure every part of it is dry. Any spot where the water stays, the rust will go. That's why I like to get it really hot because then any little stray droplet ends up evaporating off. Now this one actually gets cooked away because we use it so infrequently. So keeping it really dry is even more important because it won't get touched again for quite a while. All right, so we finished our pork. Now, if you clean this really quickly after having pork, it's all liquidy or beef too, and you can wipe it out pretty quick, but it's kind of sad because we ate right out of it, so we sat we had dinner and all that good stuff. And so it's, it's definitely stuck on there just a bit, even though it doesn't really look like it. And so I'm gonna do the whole stainless steel scrubber heat oil routine like usual. This will just take a really quick scrub. It's not really on there hardly at all, so that's, that's basically all I'm gonna do. Sorry, it's super loud. Everybody's just kind of playing right now. Um, so this rag is actually wet, but I will do that sometimes because as long as it's super hot, it just really quickly evaporates away. And then we'll go in with some oil so I can stack this up. Sometimes I won't do the rag, but I do like to spread it out evenly. It's just kind of like a little re-seasoning every time. And you don't have to do a lot. Like I just did too much right there. You don't need to do that much, but it doesn't really get too wasted because next time I cook, I'm gonna be using that oil. And this again is how they will stay until next time. What is this, day four, I believe? So this morning we made some French toast. There's actually still some pieces sitting in here. And this is what we're left with. I'll try to get close up so you can see. This is totally a wipe out moment because one, nothing is sticking, and two, nothing gross is on here. Like if there was pork on here, 
or beef, then we really wouldn't want to cook this next time with say something sweet or something like that. Whereas anything can go into a pan that has had bread and sweetness or egg on it. So I'm just gonna wipe this out with a dark cloth. We used a little bit of oil or butter. I don't really know what Luke used this morning. He actually made breakfast. And so all of that is still on there, yet it's clean and ready for the next time. Now I get asked a lot about glass cooktops. I don't know the official rules on that. I know that I think the official rule is that you're not supposed to. However, I will say that I had a glass cooktop in my last kitchen for 10 years and I only ever cooked with cast iron. It was never a problem. So just depends on if that's a rule that you're willing to break. Personally, I love cooking in cast iron so much, but I would just use the stove as a tool, not keep it all that precious, you know, because it's, it's to serve us. However, if the concern is breaking it, that would be a really big problem. I can tell you that we never broke it. It might have maybe caused a few scratches. I'm not sure. I never really noticed it, but I will say also, I did not keep my stove in pristine condition. I never had it like perfectly clean. And so maybe there was some scratches and wear on there. So we did it, but whether or not it is the best possible thing to keep it clean and nice, I'm not totally sure. All right, one of my kids, it's dark, it's late and dark. Uh, put some shredded cheese into a skillet on the wood stove. He likes to make these things called cheese crisps. He's never done it on the wood stove before. But anyways, he left behind some of these crispy cheese bits and also there's always a whole lot of oil or I guess like technically butter or whatever fat is in the cheese. Um, and so I'm just going to set these little bits aside because they're delicious. And then I'm just gonna wipe it out like usual because there's already a fat in here. It'll just be really nice and shiny. And then that's all I'm gonna do with that. breakfast Luke made some eggs in our skillet and then I just wiped it out and then warmed up some leftover chili in the same skillet so I like to do that a lot of times just to if it's if you're going from one thing that wouldn't affect the flavor of another just right in there and then I'm just gonna wipe it out my usual routine All right, well, I hope that this video was helpful for you to see some of the ways that we incorporate cast iron into the kitchen, how easy it is to take care of, especially whenever you just know a few things about it, just keeping it dry, preheating, things like that. If you want some more information on seasoning a cast iron skillet, I do have a video on that on my channel and I have a post on the blog, so I will leave links down in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.